I'd argue that the Cash Blaster is the best weapon Payday 2 has ever featured. This thing is ridiculously overstated, melting basically every enemy type in the game. If ever there was a good time to run DSOD attempts on heists you've struggled with in the past, it would be when the Cash Blaster was available. Except that's the thing, this monster of a joke weapon only graces our heisters gloves for weeks at a time, once per year, so you really have to make the most out of it when given the opportunity. And with this year's 9th anniversary celebration, I knew exactly exactly what I had on my hands. There was no need for testing or theory crafting, everyone's well aware of just what this thing can do, so all that's left from my perspective as a creator is to test it to its limits in the form of a dedicated challenge run. Originally I planned to use my regular Can You Beat Payday 2 formula, but with the Cash Blaster initially only scheduled to be in the game for a week, I decided to concentrate the video concept down to the very core of what Payday 2 is all about. Money. So, today, let's find out if you can successfully rob every bank in Payday 2 using only cash. As ever, let's start this video by running through the rules of engagement. Money makes the world go round and, in a metaphorical sense, is one of the most powerful weapons man has access to. But of course, the Payday gang has a tendency to take things slightly too literally. They've weaponized banknotes since 2014, and thanks to a breakthrough in technology, in 2021 we received the Cash Blaster, an experimental weapon appears to cause cardiac arrest by way of sensory overload. At least that's my headcanon. This means that with today's money only run, we have access to both a melee weapon and a secondary. Now you may have noticed one glaring flaw with the current arsenal, that being a maximum range of 10 meters, making most snipers an impossible nightmare to take on. Well, to try and compensate, I've gone digging to add a third legal weapon to the challenge rule set, the Ace of Spades Throwable. I've downloaded a mod to turn these playing cards into Steam gift cards, which is about as close to currency as I could manage. Don't overthink this one, it was just a consideration to allow me to use some less anti-sniper setups on today's run for the sake of variety. Many of my usual challenge run rules will make a return for today's challenge, with offline single player being the MO and crew AI not being allowed as they can't wield cash blasters. Skills are all fair game including jokers as they're not part of the crew and mods will as ever be kept to a minimum outside of my usual poco hood and the ace of spades retexture. However, unlike the usual full campaign runs, these seasonal challenges will be played on my main Noli account at level 100 from the get go which naturally means all heists will start on the death wish difficulty. This also means I have access to every perk deck in the game allowing me to switch between builds whenever I feel the need to. The overarching goal is to rob every bank in Payday 2 to steal the crew more ammunition for the deadliest weapon on the planet. In total, there are 8 core heists to this run, as I'm sure as hell not doing every variation of the bank heist. These include the aforementioned Harvest and Trusty Bank Heist, Go Bank, First World Bank, Brooklyn Bank, Big Bank, San Martin Bank, Firestarter due to its Day 3 component, and finally the often overlooked Election Day Plan C. For this challenge to be considered complete, I have to beat each of those heists at least once with those monetary limitations. As they say, you've got to spend money to make money. And for anyone familiar with the Cash Blaster, you'll probably already know just how easy that rule set sounds compared to my previous challenges. So, to give you guys the torture you always desire, I've decided to add one final rule that will change the game. As this is taking place during the piggy bank event, and we still need millions worth of piggy bucks to be secured, I'm taking one for the team and solo securing as much as I possibly can. On any heist that's playable within the event game mode, I need to level my bopping little pig to at least level 3 before I can complete the heist. That may not sound that bad, but when you consider the locations these guys tend to live in, alongside the fact that I can't afford to go down at any time, having to secure a total of 80 bags per heist adds quite a bit of jeopardy to the run, as I'm sure we'll find out. Six of the eight heists we're taking on have pig spawn locations, meaning we'll be adding at least 480 to the grand community total, but I'm sure things won't be that simple. With all that said, it's time to weaponize legal tender and feed some chunky pigs. I decided to start things off with a very simple bank heist, if this wasn't going to be doable it would spell pretty bad things for the rest of the run. Before heading in I put together the two core builds I believe would carry me throughout. First we have this anarchist setup, designed to pump out as much damage as possible whilst remaining hard to kill. As my primary didn't matter I could drop concealment all the way down to 6 with the Shimano compact pistols, allowing me to run just basic low blow and actually access sneaky bastard for a few extra points of dodge that might come in clutch up against those high damage snipers. 
I also went for a bonus damage with Berserker, grabbing Frenzy so I could run the Ace of Spades, whilst also acing out Bloodthirst. Not only would this make the Money Bundle far more deadly than it has any right to be, it would also allow me to reload the Cash Blaster twice as fast, which really is its only drawback. I knew this build couldn't be trusted with Sniper Heavy Heist, so set up my second build around the ever-reliable Stoic. This deck is overpowered, as we found during the Robin Hood run, and can simply carry any weapon set on a very open sniper orientated heist. This should be my workhorse build for the higher risk heist, especially when it comes to piggy bank positioning. I'm running a heavy ballistic vest variation to allow continued access to crits, with classic staples such as Hostage Taker and Iron Man for increased survivability. Now you know the builds I'll be running, it's time to hit the most heisted Harvest and Trusty branch in history. I choose to start this one off with the Stoic setup just because of how heavily Overwatch the parking lot is by spawning snipers later into the heist. On this one, I'm able to pretty much entirely focus on feeding Percy over here. By the way, I saw some incredible names suggested for the pig in my last video. Floyd Jr. after his pink brother from Big Bank, Midas for that Greek mythological twist, but I just can't get Percy out of my head, named after a staple of my childhood diet. As I mentioned, the regular bank heist kind of completes itself, bearing in mind I'll need to rack up over 400 kills to fill Percy to his chunky stage 3 form. Grabbing jokers early is key not only to take out some of the cops' focus, but also to occasionally keep the snipers in check who obviously can't be touched by my stoic build. After just over 7 minutes I was into the vault and ready to flee with a bag of ammo, I mean cash, but obviously quite a long way off my piggy bank target. I littered the entire car park with first aid kits and prepared to just strong arm my way through the sniper overwatch. That's rather the beauty of Stoic, it really can just shrug off that damage whilst completing objectives. My favourite fast collection method consisted of wiping out the abseiling assault from the safety of the dumpster corner before they'd even worked out what planet they were on. Sadly, it seemed like this run was cursed by less than ideal spawns, slowing the rate at which I could feed Percy's voracious appetite. But after nearly getting myself killed, making a mad dash to secure the final bag, I levelled our boy up one final time and escaped the heist in almost 36 minutes, an ominous portent of the kind of time I'd be spending cuddling up to this guy over the next few days. That said, I still have 5 more level 3 piggy banks to destroy. I mean geez, I guess that is what we're doing, he seems happy enough about it though. Go Bank is next on the hit list, a heist that has a history of frustrating challenge runs in the past. This time though, I have the luxury of 120 skill points to use immediately. I made a few adjustments to the stoic build, dropping the ammo skills, which I didn't find overly necessary, to actually pick up Nimble for improved lot picking, which will come in handy later on. Heading into the heist, the pig spawn this time is okay. There's not loads of cover around it, but at the very least it's out of the line of sight of most of the snipers whom I wouldn't have a chance at taking out. Magic was in the air from the get go on this one, as I cable tied Dynamo over here, who can apparently float. This is another mission that enables me to both complete the piggy bank objective and the heist itself fairly simultaneously, and one thing that makes this such a good stoic setup is its absolutely ludicrous kill per second potential, putting the hip flask on virtually a 3 second cooldown. I was also able to land some big 3 pointers on this heist, as there's not a lot of debris beside Percy to get in the way of those long range bag throws. Unfortunately, the cage setup was on the roof, meaning I was absolutely peppered by snipers throughout, but here's where Stoic's fairly ridiculous defensive capabilities come into play. Any Anarchist build would have been slaughtered at this point, in case that wasn't obvious. I quickly lockpicked the deposit boxes thanks to packing Nimble, finding my cash bundle on safe number 2, and immediately setting up to airlift just the single bag so I could get back to focusing on our porcine friend. The main thing I noticed playing through Go Bank was just how hard it is to not get consistently damaged on this heist. From the swats on the roof to the snipers in the apartments, I was heavily reliant on my alcoholism to push through and keep securing bags. Trying to set up by the gas station actually felt like a riskier strategy despite the more solid cover, as it seemed as if the snipers couldn't miss a shot on me. I had an incredibly close call at 90 minutes into the heist, where the seriously monstrous Deathwish Black Dozer nearly put me into the ground immediately, despite the tankiness of Stoic. Fortunately, uppers is OP. This was far from my only scare though, I nearly got sent tumbling just a minute later by the world's best urban sniper team, and then shortly after that by another monster of a black dozer. In fact, I actually think that this skulldozer could have ended the run if his AI hadn't been distracted by that shiny open window. 
The room for error was also steadily shrinking as I ran low on FAKs. On the plus side, Percy actually makes for pretty top tier cover once leveled up to stage 3, meaning I could hide behind his shiny golden chops to once again set his soul free. That's how I'm roleplaying it anyway. This left me escaping on foot with no first aid to spare, but honestly, once into the sewers it really is just a matter of muscle memory for me at this point. Another successful 35 minute heist. At least I was earning double XP for my trouble. First World Bank is next on the hit list. This is the first heist where Percy's spawn location is really just a hindrance for completing the rest of the objectives, meaning I'd have to focus on it separately. Nothing wrong with giving your hog the full attention though. Sadly, I had strange ambitions of this being an ideal heist to test my Anarchist build out on, and all was going great. My damage output was second to none, until a sniper stepped up and one-shot me without even the slightest warning. Hell, I still can't see where I was killed from. Back to the drawing board for you, Anarchist. Stoic is my only true friend. Heading in again, I actually decided to go for a slightly different strategy this time, planning to clear the heist in stealth up to having the vault open, and then giving Percy the love and attention he deserves. Although it looked like a bust early on, I was able to recover thanks to the truly mind-blowing power of the money bundle and upsettingly pathetic AI. After taking out those two patrols, the bank manager's hogtie body was safely hidden, meaning I could proceed on into the vault and slap a few more fellas down with the destructive power of the US dollar. I guess that's what's meant by hyperinflation. With the vault open, I could happily switch to loud and secure the 8 necessary bags of ammo in the vents before returning to the foyer for the next 20 minutes of gameplay. In one piece of amazing news, the snipers that tend to spawn in this portion of the map can be killed even by the limited range of the cash blaster, which is a pretty huge revelation. To tell you the truth, there really wasn't much to this one, there's ample cover, the cops are easy to run in circles if need be, and without having to worry about the spike damage of snipers, Stoic felt close to invincible. Skulldozers and minigun dozers did offer the occasional threat, especially with the lower DPS of this build, but it was never something that first aid kits couldn't handle. With pretty concentrated and frequent spawns, I was able to fill Percy to the brim far easier on First World Bank. With my ludicrous DPS and survivability, the escape section of this heist was also a walk in the park. 50% done with the level 3 piggy banks, but of course I couldn't forget the payday 2 banks that were not graced by the Hogfather. I now moved over to election day, and bearing in mind I wouldn't have to spend 30 dangerous minutes feeding the beast, I once again switched over to Anarchist. Day 1 is very easy, all I have to do is fail upwards, tagging the wrong truck to ensure we get the planned C variant of day 2. Believe it or not, this is a bank heist, even though it's only a cover up for the more scandalous election fraud we partake in. After failing day 1 successfully in stealth, day 2 really shouldn't be that difficult, although the entire concept of first aid kit anarchist makes me very anxious, and to be honest, it's still not necessarily enough to keep me alive up against the consistent damage of minigun dozers, as you can witness in action here where the dozer breaks my armour and a flanking shield finishes me off. At this point, it was pretty clear which bill was better for the rule set, but I'm a stubborn idiot and absolutely wanted to show off those Steam gift cards. Shortly after setting up the thermal drill to enter the bank vault, snipers start to spawn in, who fortunately fall just within the range of the cash blaster, although I'd still need uppers activations to really go toe to toe with them in my suit. It was, however, noticeable how much more powerful this build was in a pure DPS race, demolishing this Skulldozer, who proceeded to then have quite the comical death scene, climbing on top of the drill in the final act of defiance. Shortly after, I picked up my first Ace of Spades kill, finally justifying its inclusion in the rule set. Keep in mind, these cards deal only 30 base damage, so headshots are undoubtedly going to be key. Given that most of this heist takes place in such a claustrophobic, close range setting, the power of the Anarchist setup was clearly starting to shine through. I was able to enter the vault after 8.5 minutes, leaving our dozer friend to be the second floating character in this run, before quickly drilling through the second security gate. Basically, the key was just to keep on top of sniper spawns wherever possible, whilst also clearing corridors around the vault room. Here I was incredibly lucky to survive due to that added dodge chance, and took my opportunity to start moving the two bags of cash. It would have been nice to actually find the empty vault variation here, but beggars can't be choosers, and the cash blaster thirsts for more banknotes. I have to admit, the escape was a goddamn mess, so many close calls and clutch armor gating moments, an actual activation of feigned death for once which finally justified its build inclusion after all these runs, then what I would probably consider another fortunate escape across to the van, the luckiest ace of spades knockdown you have ever seen, and a slippery clear of this heist in just under 15 minutes. 100% I've just used up the entirety of my luck for this year. That in mind, it's time to return to the nice and consistent stoic for San Martin Bank. Too many snipers in high places to stick with Anarchist. 
Honestly, this heist doesn't require too much time or consideration. With the B set up, it's just a waiting game until we can start moving the loot by a zipline, which was really the only tricky part, almost getting decimated three times over on the way out by a small army of shields, doses and snipers. Even so, escape was secured. Back into the event, and I clearly thought I hadn't pushed my luck enough thus far, so I decided to go back to Anarchist for Firestarter. I also slightly switched up my build, dropping some concealment to run the saw, and instead picking up high value target and unseen strike. Firestarter is an incredibly strange heist, for whatever reason, I'm terrible at it. Wasting over 6 minutes carrying the weapons up the hill to the escape van, before trying to go toe to toe with a mini dozer who decimated me, bearing in mind all those points of crit I'd sacrificed. Then I was torn a new one by a couple of Mendoza boys, I still find the DPS of gangsters takes me by surprise, and of course it wouldn't be a Noli video without blowing myself up at least once, although this one I kinda forgive myself for, what the hell is the range on that weapon explosion? One more quick death by firing squad before I finally pulled myself together and started paying attention again. The key was to play the Mendozas at the airport against the spawning responders, giving me more time to start moving the weapons to the fuel vat. Once I'd secured a couple of jokers, it was much easier to create space outside of this moment where I was seriously caught out and had to rely on feigned death going off once again. I made a meal of it, but this was an easy day one clear in the grand scheme of things. Day 2 is the real reason why I switched over to the saw setup, going through the first two doors instantly, meaning I'd only need to drill the one gate. This was easy enough, but the escape was another story. Knowing there was a sniper covering the van, I made a break out of the main entrance, carrying both servers at the same time. Before I could even make out his positioning though, he sent me straight to the floor with money flying all around, the way I'd like to go out. But apparently, Payday's RNG gods had other ideas, once again bringing me back from the dead, but in the worst possible location. Caught like a cat in the headlights, I sort of bunkered down, which wasn't a brilliant idea, as I panicked and ran straight back to the FBI office before again testing my luck, courtesy of the overwatching sniper. And yet again, the dice roll favoured me, back on my feet and fully reloaded thanks to the taser. There was no way I was pushing my chances any further though, that sniper had to go. Except he was so awkwardly placed, I had to flank all the way around to the right hand side to get an angle where at long last, my trusty Steam gift cards could find their mark and validate their inclusion in the rule set. With that, I had the space to secure the two servers and escape to day 3. This is of course just a slight variation on the regular bank heist that I'd be approaching the same way. I felt like I'd pretty much earned my cash blasting stripes at this point, demolishing everything in my path and fueling the pig in record time. This dozer didn't quite know how to handle it all. But as is so often the case, pride comes before a fall, as a taser found out that the stoic setup wasn't rocking shot proof, allowing him to torture me right in front of Sniper City and take me down before I could sip my whiskey. The first heist failure for stoic but certainly not the last. My second run at Firestarter Day 3 was infinitely more successful than the first though, avoiding tasers like the plague unless it was to instantly cheese out a free reload, one of my favourite interactions with an enemy type, filling up Percy in a record breaking 28 minutes. Not a bad recovery at all. But here is where things took a remarkable nosedive for me. The second to last heist on my bank robbing list, Brooklyn Bank, is funnily enough not one where you even have to steal any cash. This heist is normally nothing special, sometimes you can get lumped with less than ideal objectives, but it's certainly never been a major hurdle for any run in the past. Sadly, the piggy bank is placed in a frighteningly terrible location, so whilst the actual objectives are easy enough, I had to prepare for a seriously intense defence at Percy. Initially, I thought this wouldn't be so bad, as there are loads of spawns around the grocery store car park, meaning piggy fuel was plentiful, and two of the four main sniper spawns could be reached by the cash blaster. Sadly, one was completely out of my range, and had a brilliant, unassailable view of the pig, meaning once he spawned, this turned into quite the nightmare. Uppers and Stoic felt very necessary in this case. Constant pressure by endless waves of dozers was forcing me to use up my FAKs and making it very difficult to secure every bag that spawned. But my real run killing mistake came when I decided to steal the medallion close to the end of the heist. I wasn't to know, but this spawned the escape van right by poor Percy. Instead of giving me more cover, it actually just led to the cops glitching all over the newly spawned van, often dropping their loot bags into the escape zone where I couldn't reach to secure them. This massively slowed down progress and wasted precious resources, but even so, I was just about able to fill him up to level 3 without any first aid remaining. 
At last though, for betraying my beautiful pig, I received the punishment I deserved. As Percy crumbled into a thousand pieces, I was exposed, a taser caught onto me in an instant and put me into the ground for crimes against piggy bank kind. This was really tough to take, just a few meters from the escape. But I pulled myself together and went again. This time, I was even luckier with my RNG. The sniper spawned on the only rooftop, which had no view of the parking lot, and whilst he was alive, it seemed that no others could spawn in, allowing me to purely focus on creating as much carnage as possible. At this point though, it was clear that someone was messing with me. Despite all the apparent good fortune making record time, it decided to spawn a black and minigun dozer from the heavens alongside a taser to cut yet another run short. This is one example of the stoic build struggling where the anarchist setup could have thrived, but that's all hindsight now, with run 3 throwing about as many curveballs as it could muster. The SWAT van turret spawn, for example, is pretty debilitating, locking me down behind cover at all times. I made it to 10 minutes into this heist under these less than ideal circumstances before being shut down by a hyper aggressive green dozer at close range. With no lifelines implemented on this run, I was starting to feel the heat, but it wasn't time to throw in the towel just yet, re-rolling the heist and being hit with the crane sniper this time, which can be a nuisance, but honestly, I prefer just to leave him alive as he certainly wasn't the most problematic of all the potential snipers on this heist. At this stage, I had the madness of this Brooklyn Banks event variation down to a science, tearing through everything and securing the loot bags incredibly quickly. At one point, I was actually forced to deal with four minigun dozers at once. That is not meant to be possible, but is yet another spaghetti code issue with Diesel, so don't you ever complain that all I get is good RNG. After making it through that though, I reckon I could make it through just about anything the game had to throw at me, deciding to finish off the pig first before activating the escape and completing comfortably the most challenging heist on this run so far. I'd say keep away from it, but honestly, it's just really good fun, especially in a group, so be sure to try out Brooklyn Bank's event variation before it goes away on the 24th. The final bank to hit and replenish our coffers is the Benevolent. Big Bank, another sniper heavy experience that I wasn't going to risking Anarchist on after that suffering back in Brooklyn. I gave this guy a money slap because I was considering stealthing the first half of the heist, but that didn't go quite to plan. This certainly slowed me down, especially as I had to sit on the roof for two minutes waiting for a drill to finish, but once I was into my flow, nothing was going to stop me. I set up the thermite to burn whilst I handled my pig, grabbed four bags of cash once into the vault, and worked through those issues I developed with those of kind over the last couple of hours. In what's probably a fairly anticlimactic finale to the challenge, Percy is located in a really kind and safe location on Big Bank, not really requiring any fancy strategies to get around. If anything, I found the enemy spawns to be too spread out and a little on the slow side, and whilst I still managed to turn the managerial corridor into one of those high body count scenes resembling Dante's Nine Circles of Hell, this was comfortably the slowest picky grind to complete, taking over 40 minutes total. Despite what seemed to be my best attempt to get myself killed for a little drama 33 minutes in, this one was as clean as they come. And with that completion, I have indeed robbed every bank in Payday 2 using only money as a weapon. I will fight you if you suggest Steam gift cards and not legal tender. Of course, this was by no means on the same level of undertaking as previous challenge runs. The Cash Blaster is a freaking monster, and I wasn't half as restricted as I usually am. But occasionally, you need those little wins in life, and I'm not ashamed to admit, two hours into playing Brooklyn Bank, I was starting to wonder if I'd made an error in judgement. I'm a huge fan of thematic challenges such as this one, so if you have more novel ideas or simply formats I haven't considered yet for the classic challenge runs, be sure to keep them coming my way. I have a very busy schedule planned, including two full-size challenges on the go simultaneously, one of which returning to Twitch, a hopefully very interesting study of how Payday approaches the new player experience with a very special guest appearance, and the 2022 Mods of the Year video. So with all that coming up, make sure you don't miss out, keep a close eye on the channel, and if you really want to go the extra mile to support me, check out my continued partnership with Apex Gaming PCs, we have a range of three desktop options for you to consider as avid Payday fans. All that said, thank you for watching today's video, I'll hopefully see you all very soon. Enjoy your last few days in the company of Percy, make sure that you cherish them. I know I will. A huge thank you to my dedicated Patreon backers. If you want to join this crew in Going Infamous, check out the link below and pledge as little as $2 to see your name in the credits, or get 24 hour early access to future videos and vote on upcoming content. Take care, I'll see you all soon.